Did you know that 73% of Americans die with debt, leaving on average over $61,000 of financial burden behind for their family? 61% of Americans surveyed are more afraid of going broke than they are of dying. And 60% of Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account, leaving them just one unexpected expense away from being flat broke. So if you don't want to be a statistic, then here is how to build wealth starting from zero. Man, Kiala Kanai. Kiala Kanai, he takes entrepreneurs on a journey to grow the business. All right, I have four tips to cover for you in this video, and hang with me until the very end because tip number four is easily the one that's given me the biggest breakthrough that took me from working in a coffee shop like this to earning over $100 million in my online business. Now, starting at the top, tip number one is to first get clear about what does wealth mean to you. Everybody defines this differently. As an example, my videographer, Sam, here behind the camera, his idea of wealth is just having a lifetime supply of blow-up dolls. He hasn't had a girlfriend he didn't have to inflate. Anyway, getting back to business. Defining wealth gives you the opportunity to reverse engineer from your goal to where it is that you are right now. Now here's some important stats to understand in order to get to that financial goal. First, when we talk about wealth, what most people are referring to is having enough capital invested in the markets so that they can live off the returns on those investments alone. That means making working completely optional because your investments are providing everything that you need to maintain your lifestyle. Now, when we think about wealth through that lens, there's some more important stats that we need to understand. One is that on average, over the last several decades, the financial markets have had an average rate of return of just over 8%. That means if we want to live purely off the return on our investments, that return needs to be 8% of the total money that we have invested in the markets. Another important statistic is to understand that on average, every 15 years, as a result of inflation, the cost of living basically doubles. So let's say that we want to retire early at the age of 50 and live a simple six-figure a year lifestyle. That would mean by the age of 50, we would have to have $1.25 million invested in the markets at an 8% return in order to get that $100,000 a year passively. Now remember, every 15 years, the cost of living is going to double. That means that that person by 65 would have to have $2.5 million invested, spitting off 8%, giving them $200,000 a year passively. By 80, they would have to have $5 million invested at an 8% return, giving them $400,000 a year passively. And remember, that $400,000 is no increase at all to their lifestyle. That's just the cost of living the $100,000 a year lifestyle that they used to live just 30 years prior. And consider this, if you're under 40 right now, there's a decent likelihood you're gonna live well into your 90s. So at 95, that person would have to have $10 million invested at an 8% return, spitting off $800,000 a year in order for them to live completely off of their passive income. Now, once you break down the numbers, most people are shocked because they realize that they're far away from where it is that they need to be financially. That brings me to tip number two. If you are staggered by the statistics that we just covered, don't worry. So is 99% of everybody else out there watching this video. And if you're behind on your passive income, the simplest antidote is gonna be to increase your active income. Our active income is the income that we're earning every day from the work that we do. Now, in order to increase our active income, we have to increase the value that we're delivering to the marketplace every day. You can't simply go to the same job every day, doing the same things, learning no new skills, and expect that you're gonna earn more over time. We all get paid in direct proportion to the value that we deliver to the marketplace. If we are doing a, a job, a mundane job that just about anybody can learn how to do, well then we can't expect to earn a lot of money in return for it. This, by the way, is exactly what I did a few years ago. I realized that I needed to change my financial situation. And one of the first things that I did is invest in learning new skills. Now, there's a few skills that come to mind for me right off the top of my head based on the industry that I'm in. For example, the media buyers who run all of our ads for us in our company, they make $100,000 a month. Our copywriter makes over $20,000 a month plus bonuses. And people on my sales team, they make twenty dollars to $40,000 a month. Now, all of that in contrast to my videographer here, Sam, I mean, he gets paid nothing. You said this was a 10-year internship. That's standard for your role, Sam. Don't Google it. No problem, Cal. I know you got my back. Anytime, buddy. So if we're not earning enough active income to meet our passive income goals, then the obvious solution is to invest in skills that you can learn over time that increase your value to the marketplace 
increase your earnings, which in turn will increase your ability to save and invest. All right, tip number three is a key ingredient in real long-term wealth, and that is delayed gratification. Have you ever heard of the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment? It was conducted in 1972 by Walter Mischel, a psychologist, in which he put children in a room and offered them one marshmallow. If they ate the marshmallow, they would just get the one. But if they waited till he returned to the room, he would give them a second marshmallow. Now, of course, some kids were able to wait, some kids were unable to wait. Well, later on in follow-ups to that study, there became a correlation between those children and their later social status and earnings in life and other attributes as well. Now full transparency, that study has been challenged, but still you get the point. Literally every wealthy person that I know understands that success is a game of delayed gratification. So if you're behind right now and you're going to invest in new skills, don't make the mistake of rewarding yourself as your income increases. Instead, reward yourself as your savings increases. Don't reward yourself for earnings milestones, reward yourself for savings milestones. That brings me to tip number four, which revolves around the most surprising statistic of all. And that is the fact that the majority of people who are watching YouTube videos right now or reading books about wealth are gonna do absolutely nothing with the information that they've learned. Why is it that so many people know what they need to do, but actually end up doing nothing? Now, this human phenomenon, this human mystery, has actually been solved by a field of study known as axiology. Now, I'm gonna keep this part very brief because I have a whole nother video where I go much deeper on this topic. However, make no mistake, this is the biggest component that has helped alter my life completely, especially from a financial standpoint. Now, through axiology, we can observe that every single human being has a hierarchy of values, the things that we value most in life down to the things that we potentially don't value at all. And notice that we all get exactly what we value out of life. In other words, you know, the mom who wakes up every morning and the first thing on her mind is her children, her children's health, her children's education, her children's learning, her children's after school programs, and all these sorts of things. No matter how much she says that she wants to start a business, she's very unlikely to actually do so because, well, she just values the children more. And I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. The person who you know loves their career, loves their job, is exhilarated about the challenges that they're facing in their career at this time. No matter how much they say that they wanna go to the gym, they end up not really end up going to the gym because they just value doing their job more. Again, not saying right or wrong. It's simply that most of us set goals or desires about things that we'd like to accomplish that are way down here, except the things that we truly value in life are way up here. Now, the things that we value in life will always consume the majority of our resources, time, energy, and money. However we invest, our time, energy, and money will become our destiny. Which, by the way, here's your wake-up call. If you found yourself considerably behind in tip number one, you don't have a very high value on money. And until you do, you will not do the things necessary to have money. That's why I say it. So, what did we learn, Sam? Wow. That tastes an awfully lot like Sam's hand. How would I even know how Sam's hand tastes? That's so... Anyway, I hope you got value out of this video, my friend. And if so, and you're somebody who is committed to more success in your life and your business, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you get notified every week when I eat more marshmallows like this. And in case we've never met before, my name is Kyle Kanai. I'm an entrepreneur that got started in a coffee shop like this for minimum wage, and I've gone on now to earn over $100 million in my online business. And I only say that so that you know that everything I share on my channel comes from real world applied knowledge of things that I've learned and applied in order to get those results, which I share here in hopes that they help you create similar results as well. So subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and watch this next video in the lineup. I won't be eating marshmallows, but I will be talking more about how to shift your values to align with money.